one mega project in particular has accelerated China's development over the last 30 years. Technological innovation and the manufacture of large machines and equipment have enabled civil engineers to challenge natural barriers and overcome a variety of difficulties. 750,000 bridges now link the cities and villages of China. Since numerous logistical difficulties have been overcome, people can travel with greater ease and speed than ever before. From the north to the south, let's explore how China's civil engineers are conquering these natural barriers to build the magnificent bridges that are helping change people's lives. August is a beautiful time of year in Guizhou province. Zheng <laughs> Shupeng is a wingsuit flyer. Today, he's going to launch himself from a bridge. The Qingshui River Bridge was completed a mere eight months ago. It's the most beautiful suspension bridge in Guizhou province. It crosses the 1,400 meter wide fault zone and is over 400 meters from the bottom of the valley. It's a hotspot for extreme sports enthusiasts. Guizhou is a little smaller than the UK in size and has a population of 35 million. The biggest obstacle to building a road here is the U-shaped valley. The scenery in Guizhou attracts visitors from all over the world. Ten years ago, if they wanted to cross the valley, they had to use poor quality roads and dirt paths. They had to first climb down, then cross the water using a small bridge at the bottom, and then climb back up the other side. Guizhou sits in a plateau region, and the terrain here once made life very difficult and inefficient, as opposed to residents of eastern China. Upgrades in bridge technology have accelerated expressway construction in the western part of China, and Guizhou may soon welcome a new era of rapid development. Zheng's jump helps Guizhou attract the world's attention. Bridges are important in modern society. They shorten traveling times and speed up changes in society. Their contributions are also important in other ways. Sixty years ago, China entered a new era the government decided to shift from an agrarian-based economy to an industrial one. 
To facilitate this change, different areas abandoned a mode of self-sufficiency for cross-regional cooperation. However, it's not easy to achieve such sudden change in a country of 9.6 million square kilometers. The Yangtze is the largest river in China. Bisecting the center of the country, it's a natural barrier between north and south. Although its water irrigates and nourishes the 400 million people who live along it, it increases the difficulty of transporting commodities between the south and the north. Its widest section is five kilometers across. In the past, nobody had managed to build a bridge across the river, which left ferries as the only choice when it came to transportation. Ren Fada is 85 years old. He witnessed how a bridge could usher in profound change. At that time, it took two hours to cross the river, even when it was less than two kilometers across. On top of that, the ferry often had to cease operations because of inclement weather. The river was seriously hindering China's development. A bridge across the river was an imperative. In 1957, the first Yangtze River Bridge was built at Wuhan with the help of Soviet experts. Later, in 1968, the Chinese built the first Nanjing-Yangtze River Bridge. After it was built, people no longer had to cross by ferry. With an investment of 280 million yuan and eight years of hard work by hundreds of thousands of workers, it was truly the largest mega project ever attempted in China at the time. Over the following half century, 162 bridges have been built over the Yangtze River, shouldering some 18 billion trips a year. They have helped to connect the North and South economically. The 162 bridges form a highly efficient transportation network and have enhanced the rapid development of the Yangtze River economic belt. The 163rd bridge is now being built. The Yangsu Gang Yangtze River Bridge will be a double decker suspension bridge with the largest span in the world. The biggest difficulty when building a bridge like this remains the same as it did 60 years ago, which is placing piers on the riverbed. After thousands of years of sedimentation, there is barely any hard riverbed in the lower reaches of the Yangtze River. The engineers use steel open caissons to build the piers. In the factory 10 kilometers away, a 77.2 meter long, 40 meter wide, and 23 meter tall steel open caisson weighing 6,200 tons has just been finished. The workers use airbags to transport the caisson to the river and use four tugboats to tow it to the construction site. Then the caisson is positioned on the riverbed and built upon until the structure reaches a height of 50 meters. On its own, the caisson isn't heavy enough, so the engineers place 18 silt suction machines into the river. They work nonstop to suck the mud and sand from below the caisson so it can sink down further. The workers must be very careful not to let the caisson deviate from its original position. Precision is key. After 168 days of hard work, the steel open caisson is about to reach its scheduled operational depth. Next, a 240-meter pylon will be erected here. The Yangsu Gang Yangtze River Bridge will soon break the record for a suspension bridge in China with its 1,700-meter span. 
China took only 18 years to develop its bridge building technology from a 400 meter span across the river to a 1,650 meter span across the sea. Nowadays, there are over 20,000 meter plus span bridges in China. Chinese engineers continue to make breakthroughs in bridge building technology. Dongting Lake is the second largest lake in China. The Hangzhou Reili Expressway links the eastern and western parts of China and must cross this lake. A suspension bridge is the key. The second Dongting Lake Bridge is 1,480 meters long. It has two anchorages weighing more than 630,000 tons, two main pylons, which are more than 200 meters high, two main cables more than 2,600 meters long, and a steel truss arch deck weighing more than 43,000 tons. It's the fifth longest suspension bridge in China. The anchorages and main pylons are all in place. The engineers are now focusing on the most important step, setting up the main cables. The main cables are the key component of suspension bridges. They have to carry the 40,000 ton deck and last for at least 100 years. The production standards for the main cable of this thousand meter suspension bridge have to be made to the strictest of quality and specifications. The five millimeter diameter steel wires are produced in a factory 760 kilometers away. Twenty thousand tons of steel wire rods have just arrived. The workers have to be very careful during the next phase of the operation. The tensile strength of the rebar is more than 1,860 megapascal, and it will be drawn into 5 millimeter diameter wire. The difficulty is how to maintain the strength of the material. The wire goes through a metallic solution at 450 degrees Celsius and is plated with a thin anti-corrosive coating. The coating must resist up to 100 years of environmental corrosion. The wire is transported to another workshop for the next step. At the planning stage, each wire is given its own position on the bridge. 127 wires form a strand, and 172 strands form a main cable. The two main cables will carry the weight of the bridge, which is over 90,000 tons. After six hours, a 2,600 meter long strand is finished.
In three months, it will be transported to Dongting Lake and await installation. In this period of rapid development, every year, 10,000 new bridges are built in China, changing the lives of the people in the cities and towns they connect. With their abundant bridge building experience, Chinese engineers are beginning to look further afield. The Ling Ding Yang is an important bay in southern China the earliest advanced manufacturing and service centers in China can be found in its nine surrounding areas. But poor transportation links are a hindrance to further development. The solution is a sea bridge. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge links Hong Kong in the east with Zhuhai and Macau in the west. The driving time will also be shortened from four hours to just 30 minutes. It will take nine years, 550,000 tons of steel and 2.3 million tons of cement to build the longest sea bridge in the world over a 35 kilometer wide stretch of water. At the Zhongshan Manufacturing Base, the largest and heaviest steel box girder of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is about to be shipped to the construction site. It's 128 meters long 38.8 meters wide and weighs 3,510 tons. That's equal to half the weight of the Eiffel Tower. The engineers use precise manufacturing and hoisting techniques to lower the risks associated with steel box girder construction at sea. To ensure a long service life, the 2,156 massive steel box girders are all manufactured in the factory. The factory is full of automated equipment, including laser cutters, rolling machines, and welding robots. This helps take the human error out of the equation. It's also very challenging to transport the heavy girder to the ship. It requires a mixture of cutting edge technology and good timing. It's 6 a.m. on an April morning and nearing high tide. To carry the 3,510 ton girder safely to the ship, the engineers arrange four girder transport vehicles. Each of them has 32 axles and 128 wheels making it possible to precisely adjust the direction. It takes only 30 minutes to transport the girder to the barge. There's now only one step left before the team achieves its goal. After 24 hours, the largest steel box girder has arrived at the installation site. Two heavy lifting machines will complete the work. Floating cranes were first used in China back in the 1950s, when workers at wharves and ports used them to shuttle goods to and fro. Back then, the lifting capacity was between 30 to 300 tons. With the increasing development of maritime freight services, the requirement for large installation equipment has increased as well. Nowadays, 1,000 to 3,000 ton floating cranes are a common sight. 
China also has the ability to manufacture floating cranes with a lifting capacity of over 12,000 tons. Everything is ready. The workers have to connect the 40 lifting points on the girder to the crane in the shortest possible time. Then the two men in the cab will complete the task. The biggest challenge in the hoisting operation is the coordination between the two cranes. It takes only an hour and a half to install the girder in the right place. It must be placed with an accuracy of two centimeters. The block building technique is fundamental to the speed with which Chinese bridges are built. Today, there are more than 750,000 bridges in China. Their total length is 42,600 kilometers, roughly equal to the circumference of the Earth. The constant headache for the engineers is how to keep the bridges operating normally. The Da Guan Yangtze River Bridge is located in Nanjing. The G254 high-speed train passes over it every day. Wang Yusheng is an engineer working in bridge construction. Every time the train passes over the bridge, he closes his eyes. The train is running at a speed of 300 kilometers per hour, and it only takes 28 seconds to cross the bridge. The 610 passengers on board don't know that the Chinese engineers prepared over 10 years for that half-minute journey. High speed trains cross the Da Shangguan Yangtze River Bridge at a blazing speed of 300 kilometers per hour. The bridge has won many important awards, including the George S. Richardson Medal for its excellent design and construction. Making sure that trains can safely pass over the bridge is of daily importance. It's 2 a.m and the last train of the day has just passed over the bridge. Maintenance work starts with checking the tools. It's dangerous if any tools are left on high-speed track. The workers have about four hours in the morning to conduct maintenance on the bridge. Sometimes they have even less time. Making quick decisions and fixing potential hidden problems while guaranteeing the safety of several hundred high-speed trains is a tall order to fulfill each and every day.
Besides on-site maintenance, more advanced technology is being used for bridge monitoring. 400 kilometers away, engineers are monitoring updated data coming in from more than 300 sensors on the bridge. They can monitor the real-time data of each vehicle. Using advanced analytical software, they can assess the threat from overloaded vehicles, detect the location and degree of damage, and provide advice on solutions and repairs. The data is sent to the monitoring center via the internet. The engineers can even keep tabs on the situation from outside China, if need be. Another technology is in the final testing phase. Wang Bo is going to lead his team in conducting an important field test. The Tianxing-Zhou Bridge is a twin pylon cable stayed bridge. Its main span is 504 meters and it can bear a load of 20,000 tons. The longest cable is 271.9 meters with a bearing capacity of 1,250 tons. On a cable stayed bridge, the cables must carry the load and are vulnerable to certain environmental factors. They can suffer from cracks on the surface and internal damage. So cable maintenance is very important. The robot can carry out precision tests to check both the external and internal integrity of the cables. The traditional method is to have men in crane baskets visually inspect the cable. The good thing is that the robot not only works well in the daytime, but also at night. After seeing large volumes of data, the engineers are a bit worried about the safety of the bridge. Any overload will have a direct influence on the structural integrity of the bridge. Real cases remind the engineers to be extremely careful with and to report any signs of hidden problems to the relevant authorities to prevent an accident. Over the past 15 years, the traffic department has stopped more than 150,000 overloaded trucks from passing across the first 1,000-meter-long bridge in China. From 2004, With the help of big data and the internet, greater numbers of bridges are taking advantage of remote monitoring systems. The data provides a useful reference for future bridge design. As a satellite image shows, the most brightly lit areas, those with the highest traffic flow, also happen to be those with the most bridges. A well-connected traffic network is changing people's lives. But in China's western provinces, change is happening at a much slower rate. Sichuan, Yunnan, and Guizhou are located in southwest China. The average altitude of the three provinces is 2,600 meters. Because of large differences in altitude, this part of the country enjoys a wide range of climatic conditions. It's much harder to build an expressway here than on the central plains or across a stretch of ocean. There's a national highway that winds its way through the mountains. 
The two-lane road was built 30 years ago and is one of three roads giving access to China's Tibet Autonomous Region. The travel time from Ya'an to Kangding used to be one day, but the newly built expressway will shorten that to only four hours. The key to this expressway is a bridge. Building a bridge in a place like this presents an unprecedented problem for the engineers. The different geological structures add a lot of difficulty to the production of a key component to bridge building, anchorage. Good anchorage is important for suspension bridges as it fastens the main cable securely. The Western Bank is wide open, and it's relatively easy to dig 630,000 cubic meters of earth. A 230,000 ton anchor point is under construction. But it's very difficult to dig a foundation pit of the same volume on the Eastern Bank because of the granite. The engineers have to find other methods to stabilize the cables. They decide to excavate a huge tunnel in the mountain. First, they dig a 159-meter-long tunnel. Then in it, they build a 10-story-high steel structure weighing 1,000 tons. Finally, they inject 8,600 cubic meters of concrete inside to integrate it fully into the mountainside. The installation of 172 steel tie rods is of great importance. Each rod is going to be connected to one strand inside the main cable. To solve this problem, the engineers abandoned the traditional hoisting method and instead use a hoisting cable technique. They use two hanging points to adjust the angle of the rods and put them into their designated positions. Another steel tie rod is installed. This clever method allows the anchoring of the tunnel to proceed smoothly. 1,200 kilometers away, in Chongchong, Yunnan province, the 158-kilometer-long Baoshan Chongchong Expressway is about to open to traffic. Chongchong is at the end of China's expressway network. Longjiang is a large and beautiful river close to Chongchong. The river is a natural obstacle that had to be dealt with. Engineers pondered how to cross the river for quite a long time. Seventy years ago, this old suspension bridge was the only way of crossing the river. It connected the people on the opposite banks of the river and was an important channel for the exchange of resources between China and Myanmar. Today, a concrete bridge makes it more convenient. 
Yet, it still takes about a half an hour to cross the river. Soon, the Baoshan Tongchong Expressway is going to change this situation. The 1,196 meter long suspension bridge will shorten the driving time to less than a minute. Cheng Wen is the chief director of the bridge project. 70 years ago, members of his family built the old suspension bridge located here. Chung majored in bridge engineering. Today, he's in charge of the kind of bridge that his forefathers might have only dreamt about in the past. Joining the two sections of the bridge marks the success of the construction. Chung carefully checks each step to ensure that nothing is amiss. The two engineers who work with him are his classmates from 30 years ago. This is a unique form of cooperation in bridge building in western China. For Li Zhongrong, the bridge holds special importance. Not everybody agreed about the building of a sidewalk on the side of an expressway, but Lee insisted on the design and made it happen. There's less than one hour to go before the two sections of the bridge are joined. The last steel box girder is about to be transported from the factory. The girder is assembled in the narrow workshop. It requires special equipment to make a turn. Workers are extremely careful. It takes them 40 minutes to walk the 100 meters. The 195-ton steel box girder is lifted to its designated place. In the final seconds of the move, the workers have to put the locating pins into the holes. Seven years of hard work has finally paid off as the last girder is finally installed. The bridge is the last part of the Baoshan Tongchong Expressway. It will not only connect the people here with the outside world, but will also provide them with an opportunity to observe their hometown from a different perspective. This sort of bridge building technique is not the solution in all situations. Let's take a look at the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. A regulation troubles the engineers. A main channel should be reserved for the 300,000 ton ships to pass through. Since it's located only 10 kilometers from the Hong Kong airport, 
The safety of 1,800 flights going in and out of the airport every day must be taken into consideration. While it's not hard to install a 200 meter high pylon, the only choice here is to build an undersea tunnel. This is an immersed tube tunnel factory. It manufactures the bridge's key component of 33 immersed tunnel tubes. Each tube is 180 meters long, 38 meters wide, and 11.4 meters tall, and weighs 76,000 tons. It's a huge challenge for the bridge and tunnel industry to connect the tubes to a 6.2 kilometer long undersea tunnel. The engineers decide to divide each tube into eight sections to guarantee their precision. They strap 1,100 tons of steel rebar into a frame structure and transport it to the automatic template workshop. Then 3,300 cubic meters of concrete is injected into it. Four days later, a 22 meter long tube section is produced under strict quality control. Eight sections will eventually be connected into one massive tube later on in the process. Compared with construction on land, the installation of the 33 immersed tunnel tubes is far more challenging. Since this is the first time they've built such a deep tunnel, their knowledge and instincts are put to an extreme test. <laughs> Lin Ning is the director of the Immersed Tube Tunnel Project. In his opinion, the installation is a risky proposition. May is flood season in the Pearl River region. Although it looks calm on the surface, the runoff flow has increased sharply from 2,000 cubic meters per second to 26,000 cubic meters per second. Conditions are quite dangerous. The mud drenched up by the rapidly flowing water may quickly cover the foundation trench 40 meters under the sea. They have to complete the tube work before the trench is completely covered. There's only a brief window of opportunity for them to complete the work. They've been waiting 45 days for a day like this. Towed by eight tugboats with a power of 60,000 horsepower for 10 hours, the E-26 tube finally arrives at its docking position. Under the water, 25 tubes have already been connected. The workers are making their final preparations. Soon, the 180 meter long tube will sink 25 meters and dock with the other assembled components. The engineers adopt a staged sinking method. They have 10 minutes between each phase to adjust the location of the tube. Uh, 
到的这样一个八万人的中心，所有的操控都在这里完成。They work non-stop until the next morning. Divers will dive 30 meters underwater to observe the docking status. Each diver can only stay at such a depth for 30 minutes. It takes the engineers three hours to complete the final 10 centimeters. The E-26-2 has been docked to the tunnel with razor-sharp precision. Six hours later, the workers open the water-sealed door on one side, noting that the undersea immersed tube tunnel is now 180 meters longer than it was. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge will enhance the development of the Pearl River Delta Economic Zone. This will also end up benefiting the western part of China. Today, distance is not only the physical length we see on the map, but is also described by the time it takes to travel somewhere. With the development of roads, the distance between people has decreased. Bridges help us conquer an ever-increasing number of natural obstacles. They connect different areas and enable people from different cultures to communicate with each other. Sometimes they even open the door to new opportunities. <laughs> 